Howdy folks, it's the Cat Face Killer. Uh, I want to apologize that this took so long to come out. Basically what had happened was I came with an idea, spur of the moment was watching Darker Than Black just for leisure, but I was trying to figure out how to go about my to-do list this year that I've, I've had for, you know, like seven years. I always add stuff to it and I don't take off stuff quicker than I'm adding to it. So I wanted to be more active this year and get through it, but just at that rate, I'm never just going to be able to complete it. So. Uh, while I was watching Dark and the Black, I was thinking of this manga title called Frasia. Both of them have the common theme of uh, the protagonist is a thug. And I just figured, you know what? This has come up in other recordings before. I don't want you to think like I'm stuck up about it or anything. I just I do it creatively, I do it for leisure. I, I don't have a big head about it or anything, but I am an author. And I've offered an author's point of view on different recordings before. And I just figured, you know what? That's something different I think I can offer. I don't think anybody else is really doing that sort of thing on podcasts or on YouTube or whatever. So I just I thought I would take these two titles and I would give my thoughts from the author's perspective. Uh, specifically, in this case, about the thug protagonist. Sorry that it took so long again. So, I mean, the idea is that I would be drawing from previous knowledge and working with two titles that I was already familiar with, unlike this time. I mean, it just happened to be because I was watching something I was not familiar with that I had to finish it. And it was actually longer than I thought it would be. I thought it was only one season. It turns out there was like a four episode little OVA in between a second season with 12 episodes. So it took me longer to get through that as well with my personal life, you know, just taking up time. So uh, without further ado, okay, as I say, this is about the thug protagonist. And I do want to get to that. That's going to be the brunt of the recording. But I'll just talk about both titles really briefly, you know, just to give you guys an idea if you are not familiar with either one, Frasia the manga or Darker Than Black the anime series. I'll go with Darker Than Black first. Darker Than Black follows this hitman named Hay. Hay has the supernatural power to generate electricity. He just sort of goes around usually killing things that this shadowy organization called the Syndicate wants him to kill. The plot itself has a lot of potential. Uh, basically, everybody in the world has the ability, apparently, to develop these supernatural powers. I don't really understand, even by the end of it, how exactly you choose to gain these powers, but, I mean, it's there. So, uh, any kind of powers you can think of, anybody really could have them. Any number of people apparently can have them. And some of them are pretty interesting, you know, I'm, I'm going to come out and say, you know, they, they are pretty imaginative when it comes to some of these powers, but... The action scenes usually unfold not that interesting to me. You're following Hay, the thug protagonist, and generally speaking his action scenes usually end up with him grabbing the big guy's face and electrocuting them. The guy's power is not exactly the most interesting, but it's pretty flexible and I, I found that kind of disappointing, especially in an anime where everybody can have any kind of powers really. Uh, there's a little bit of mystery involved with it, um, within the settings of what it has. I don't want to go too into details with it, but it's presented very stylistically. It looks beautiful. It's voice acted well. It has an interesting plot setup. The journey of the plot itself, not necessarily the most interesting, but it was entertaining enough, I found. I'm going to say all in all, I found Dark and Black actually a high watchable, but we're not here to talk about rating you know, Dark and Black specifically. I'm telling you my thoughts about the series before I actually get onto the main topic. So then we got Frasia here, which is a manga. I know that's not exactly fair comparing a manga to an anime usually, but again, I want to make it clear I'm not doing like a review or anything. Just really briefly, Frasia is also set in an alternate history Japan. Uh, I would say modern day, like early 2000s to maybe mid 2000s, like Dark and Black. There's cell phones, but there's not smartphones, for example. And the thug protagonist also has a supernatural power where he can basically make himself blend in with his surroundings. He has the ability to camouflage himself from his intended targets. And unlike Dark and the Black, very few characters in Frasia have supernatural powers, although it, it exists. So, and that's kind of it. The protagonist of Frasia is a very confused individual. He's uh, clearly mentally ill. Most of the story is him trying to find his bearing straight. And I know it sounds kind of silly, but... I found it interesting. I mean, the plot itself, outside of that, nothing deep or impressive. Definitely doesn't really compare to Dark and the Black in terms of a story. But the journey itself, I found much more interesting. However, I would say that's an acquired taste. Uh, part of it is, outside of that, the artwork looks kind of scribbled. 
And I don't know if that's a, an intentional thing because the protagonist Hiroshi, you know, has a lot of trouble with uh, perceiving reality accurately or not. I mean, but that's probably a turnoff for a lot of people, um, especially when you're comparing it to Darker Than Black. But again, this is not supposed to be like a comparison of both whole things. We're just talking about the like, protagonist. So let's break it down individually and then compare the two. So we used to be on a site called Spill.com. The main crew on it who did the podcasting split off. They do all their own things now. But the guy I'm talking about specifically was Leon on the site, which I think his name is actually Martin. And he's on Double Toasted now, the Double Toasted podcast with Mr. Corey Coleman. So he was always adamant when you have this sort of quote-unquote anti-hero, the thug protagonist, that it's hard to get behind them unless they follow some kind of code. And then all of a sudden you can get behind them. And I'm going to come out and say, neither of these characters actually have a code. And maybe that's the problem I have with Dark and the Black and not enjoying it as much. Like, in Dark and the Black, you're just thrown in the middle of a bunch of events that have happened. Some stuff happened in the past, and Hay is looking for his missing sister because a huge geographic area just, poof, vanished, and she was in it. Outside of looking for his sister, which they don't go too deep into, maybe until towards the end of the first series, there isn't really anything going on with Hay. He doesn't have any kind of code or anything. He just, the syndicate tells him to do something, usually kill somebody. And he basically pretty much does it. I don't know if it's because he doesn't have a code, but this is not that interesting to me. So maybe the code thing would have helped him a lot. However, on the other hand, you have Hiroshi, who also does not have a code. He's just, like I said, he's a mentally ill character. He's, he's very clearly mentally ill as, at that. And he's just trying to get his bearings straight. However, can I get behind him? Um, I don't know if that's that important. I mean, he's just trying to figure out what's going on in life and how to live it while he's doing his job, which is killing people, you know, but again. So within the framework of Frasia, um, killing is actually legalized. The kind of killing he does. The government enabled a what's called a Vengeance Act, where if you have a loved one that's killed or harmed dearly, you can legally go through the process and then set up like a death match, basically. And he's on like the uh, sort of quote-unquote proxy side, where if they don't want to do it themselves, then him, him and his team will go in and do it for you. And then, and then it's usually against like a, a bodyguard and the intended target. But keep in mind, again, this is all legal. Does that make him a thug? I would still say yes, because, you know, we, we associate violence with thuggery. So because I think what he's doing isn't actually illegal, you actually don't need that. You don't need a code for him to have to be able to get behind him and to root for him. Although I don't necessarily think in this particular story you need to get behind him either. You're just there for his journey while he's trying to get his head on straight, basically. And do I find it interesting? Yeah, I found it interesting. I would have liked to have re-read it before doing this recording, just to double-check, make sure my feelings are the same, but, I mean, Dark and the Black took longer than I wanted it to, so I had to just kind of go off my memory, which I found it interesting, and I enjoyed it. I wasn't wowed by it, but it was an interesting idea, interesting concept as an author, you know, to choose to have this sort of protagonist as mentally ill, like, uh, maybe Itchy the Killer if you're talking about anime, manga, I, I don't know if I really anything comes off the top of my head when it comes to anime and manga. Uh, when you're talking about literature or movies or whatever, uh, there's a bit more. Maybe like uh, I think one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I actually never read it, but my understanding is they're in an insane asylum. Maybe the guy's crazy, maybe he's not. I don't know. But that's just what comes off the top of my head. It's not something you particularly do often with your protagonists. I don't know if that would have made Dark and Black any more interesting, but it, it made Frasia interesting enough. All right, so uh, what else qualifies these two guys as thugs? I think the amount of knowledge they have pertaining to their situations. In Dark and Black's case, that would be, you know, the mystery that they're sort of trying to go through and unfold. Whereas Aphrasia, it's the character's journey of self-discovery. And even though self-discovery isn't necessarily the same as a plot, but it's still, as a viewer, that's what you know. You know what the protagonist knows typically in a story, and I think that's a common thug protagonist sort of theme. Uh, what's, what's another one? Another common one. The growing bond theme. Probably the most famous one I can think of is from Leon the Professional with Jean Reno and Natalie Portman, where, again, you have the hitman who has his own code of honor. Very simple, no woman, no children. 
and he ends up taking care of this young girl and grow closer. And it's a very likable story, one of my favorite movies. Do you have that in Darker Than Black? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, you have a bigger cast and crew in Dark and the Black, and they're more tight-knit. They get closer over time, and I think that helped that story uh, in particular, is that if you didn't have that... I mean, it wasn't that strong, per se, but it's there, and I think it helped. With Frasia, do you have that? No. It's all just about Hiroshi. He has co-workers, you know, um, when he does these missions, these revenge killings. He has teammates, but... On the reverse end, one of them is very idealistic and becomes jaded and distant. And the other one is a fucking psycho and is actually the main antagonist. He ends up wanting to kill Hiroshi, uh, which is not really a spoiler. You can tell very early on that this guy is going to want to do that. So, does that hurt Frasia? I don't think so. I think Hiroshi is an interesting enough character because he's trying to navigate his mental illness and trying to get synced in with reality. And that in and of itself is interesting enough that you don't need growing bonds necessarily. Although I would say he has him. He has a girlfriend, kind of quote unquote, and he sort of gets closer to her through the course of the story. But that's not an important part of the story, and it's only for part of it. It's not necessarily that important to the plot, or even to his self-discovery, but it does happen. And I don't think that necessarily makes him any more likable or anything, but it's there. So, uh, tried and true method? I would say so, generally speaking, with the thug protagonist. Uh, not necessary, as you can see for Frasia, which I don't think it necessarily hurt it. It was still interesting enough. So, uh, what else can we talk about? How about, like, the evolution of a character? When you talk about a protagonist that has kind of like a cookie cutter mold, like a thug, is that really that important? Hmm. Think about it not so much. I mean, in fact, I would say sometimes it hurts the character more than it helps. Let's talk about Dark and the Black. I don't want to say hate evolves, but he does change over the course of the first season, the OVAs, and then the second season. And I don't think it's necessarily a good change. I mean, he goes from the guy who doesn't know anything, he's trying to find his sister, uh, he just goes around killing guys, he doesn't really have a whole lot of emotions, doesn't really give a fuck, to... He kind of has some bonds, he kind of cares about his partners, for example. By the end of the first season, by the OVA, he cares about his one partner he's with, particularly, a lot. And then in the second season, he is the drunk, abusive mentor who just doesn't give a fuck about himself or life or anything which is a very boring path for uh, any kind of character to follow i'm sorry unless they are funny or something which he's not he's just a jerk did that hurt that character i would say yes uh was it a natural sort of path for him to follow within the storyline i would say yes it's not the fault of the creator or anything i just I didn't find that interesting for the character, especially in the second season, I did not like that. It was pretty boring, and uh, in terms of the second season too, this is getting a little bit off topic, I did not like the main protagonist who was just a squirrel girl with the ability to pull out a giant gun. We're going to ignore physics, which I'm usually a stickler on, but I mean, this is a realm where you can have any kind of powers to do anything, fuck physics, okay, whatever. But she just herself is just a squirrel girl thrust in the middle of a conspiracy, you follow her, she's kind of whiny. She has a asshole mentor, whoopee. Getting back to the thug protagonist though, hmm. How about as a mentor? Because that happens in Dark and Black. Yeah, I guess that could help. I mean, like I said, one of my favorite movies of all time, Leon the Professional, he becomes a mentor and it's kind of cool. I mean, that's one of the things where you can have a code or whatever uh, and that helps the protagonist. But not so much the case in Dark and Black. I mean, he, again, he doesn't have a code. He just does what the fuck he's told to do. And he doesn't have any qualms about it unless it conflicts with him finding his sister, in which case he will go rogue. Uh, whoopee. So, what about Hiroshi? Uh, Hiroshi doesn't really have any, so to, so to speak, evolution. He just gets a clearer perception on reality as the series progresses and that's kind of his evolution so to speak which you know i mean you're talking about the technical term no i don't think it's really important for him but if you're talking about that journey specifically where it's just him trying to be able to function more properly uh yeah i guess that's important to him how about heavy flaws or vices that the protagonist has 
again, going back to Dark Knight Black, doesn't really have any per se in the first season or the four OVAs, but in the second season, he becomes drunkard, you know, he becomes an alcoholic. Is that necessary? No, because I liked him better in the first season, uh, personally speaking. I didn't. I found that to actually be kind of annoying, if anything. How about with Frasia? Anything that you might be able to perceive kind of as a vice or a flaw, I would lump in with his mental illness. So again, that's like a stereotypical staple of a thug protagonist, but is it necessary? I would say no. Does it help? I would say usually it does, but not in either of these cases. So uh, what else comes with the thug protagonist? How about a goal? Not always do you have a goal for your protagonist, but usually a thug protagonist has a goal. We talk about hitmen, usually it's one last job and then they're done, right? Not the case in either of these stories. Let's talk about Dark and the Black, where I think this actually hurts the character. Not necessarily because it's a bad goal, just because it comes off as melodramatic the way it's done. Hay is trying to find his sister, and you don't really know anything about them. Over the course of the first season, you learn a little bit about their relationship, but not a whole lot. You discover things about them in their past, but in all, their relationship is just, they were a brother and sister, and they were close. The end. I think it could have been done much better, because instead of being like sentimental or heartstring pulling, it came off as melodramatic and kind of annoying, and then kind of made Hay erratic, actually, sometimes, because like anytime there might be a lead to his sister, he would just go off the radar, and it was like, Okay, dude, I, I guess, you know, uh, whatever. So what about with uh, Hiroshi? What's his goal? Very simple one. He just wants to understand what's going on better. And does that make for like a deep or intricate or mind-blowing sort of plot? No, but it does make the character more interesting. So I would say, all in all, I think the target protagonist is so cookie-cutter that if you don't give them some kind of goal, they're just not that interesting, to be frank. I mean, even um, the professional, which I brought up before, not going to be that interesting if it was just about him going around whacking people and that's it because he didn't have any kind of aspirations. What, what's another thug character? Itchy the Killer. You know, I mentioned that before. He was running around just killing people. Does he necessarily have any kind of goals? Yes, because he's kind of brainwashed into thinking different targets are like bullies and stuff and he wants to, you know, get revenge or whatever on them and rid the world of them. In his own mind, he's kind of doing a good thing, kind of doing a personal vengeance sort of thing. So, yeah, even he has goals and that helps make the character interesting. The only thing to remember is you got to make the goals make sense and make them interesting for the viewers. I mean, like I said, Dark and Black, there's nothing wrong with trying to find your sister as your goal. Just the way it was done came off kind of annoying because you know so little about them in their relationship and it's just sort of conveniently injected in there it feels like from time to time so that Hay has more depth to him. He's kind of a flat character even with it. What else comes with the thug character? Do they need to fight dirty? This is something that comes up a lot when I think of a thug character. It's somebody that doesn't play by the rules. They just, they're willing to do anything that it takes to get their job done to accomplish their goals. Is that necessary? A lot of people like characters with the code, as we stated before, and usually this code is something that is viewed as honorable. So that makes the character more likable. So I don't think they necessarily need to fight dirty, but I think when people think thug, they think, you know, somebody that's going to do whatever, you know, they're not going to fight fair. And that's okay, because it's a thug, right? Uh, both of these protagonists, they don't necessarily like punch people in the nuts or whatever, but they are willing to do whatever it takes to, to win, and I think that's part of what makes them thugs. By this extension, actually, that would make any ninja character realistically a thug, though, because the whole idea of a ninja is they're supposed to be willing to do whatever it takes to win, to accomplish their mission. <laughs> so, when you give them a code, all of a sudden, they're not too much a ninja in my mind. And by extension, I would say when you do that to a thug character, they start evolving out of being a thug, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean. That can be a good story in and of itself, but does that mean that guy is remaining a thug protagonist? I would say no, that's him starting a journey out of that cookie cutter sort of mold. Uh, what else comes with the thug? Do they need to be involved with crime, per se? In Dark Knight Black, the character is doing some very illegal things, so yeah, he's involved with crime. Does that help his character? I don't know if it necessarily helps this character be any more interesting or anything, but it's his role and I think it suits him well within the story. In Frasia, what Hiroshi is doing is actually technically legal, so is he involved in crime? 
Uh, no, actually. And I would still label him a thug protagonist, so not necessary, I think, in my mind. What about being quote-unquote likable? So let's look at Dark and the Black. There's two different protagonists, so let's look at Hay first. Did I like Hay that much as a character? I think I felt pretty neutral towards him. He didn't have a deep personality. You didn't get to see a whole, whole lot of his past to build a kind of connection with him or whatever. He's just sort of there. He's working his way through the mystery of the story. And is it important to like him? No, not necessarily. I mean, by the end of it, I still enjoyed watching Dark Random Black, the first season, and the OVAs, but ultimately, I didn't even like the protagonist. How about um, the second protagonist, Suo? Uh, I actually disliked her. And is it important to like her? No, but I think it probably would have helped. I mean, she really was just kind of melodramatic, annoying schoolgirl thrown into a plot. So, was it important to like her? Um, again, it wasn't important because she didn't necessarily need to be a thug to drive the narrative of the story to its conclusion. Something else happens with her at the end that's important, more important than her being a thug. So, uh, what about with Hiroshi and, and Frasia? Hiroshi is just, like I said, you know, he's just trying to get his shit together. And outside of being a crazy person, does he have a whole lot of personality? I would actually say, uh, not too much. So, is he likable? No, not necessarily, but is he interesting? I mean, yeah, he's interesting to watch. Again, is it important? Uh, I'm not convinced that it is. In fact, I would say half the time, a thug is supposed to kind of walk that thin line of you like them, dislike them, because they're a thug, they do bad stuff. You know, that's their life. So usually they don't have the greatest personality. Sometimes they have very charming ones or whatever, and I think that helps to like them, but is it necessary? No. And then these two stories, was it necessary? No. So, um, anything else? Not that I can really think of off the top of my head uh, for the thug protagonist topic. Looking back at Dark and the Black and Frasia, Frasia to me, an acquired taste. Personally, I liked it more than I did Dark and the Black, but I don't think that's going to be the popular view. I mean, it's a hard sell, partially because of the artwork, partially because just the storyline, like I said, is just you're following a character trying to get his shit straight. Whereas Dark and the Black, there's actually a mystery, there's an actual framework to the setting, you know, the entire world that's more important. It's just, overall speaking, a more impressive plot with Dark and the Black, just... I didn't enjoy it as much as I did Frasia. Will I ever talk about the thug protagonist again in other recordings? I'll probably mention it or I might talk about different aspects of it for whatever reason. I like a lot of mobster and hitman titles, you know, personally, I, I just do. A lot of them are thug protagonists, but I don't think I'll ever go in depth on this topic this much again. I don't even know if you guys will like it. I was just trying to be different because there's a lot of people talking about shit on the internet. So I want to try to do something different. I, I don't know. Hopefully you guys liked it. You found something insightful about it or whatever. I have no idea. So if you ever want to get in contact with me, uh, the best way is through Twitter at the underscore old boy. Join us on Planet Tyro for any kind of discussions on Facebook. Check out our archives on YouTube. I mean, we are on Shout and some other podcasting hosted sites, but YouTube has all of our shit. So just type in Planet Tyro to your browser. It's going to take you straight to our YouTube channel. And um, hopefully, you know, you guys like this and I'll do similar things from this point on talking about two different titles. See you around.